Yes, yeah, sir. -y. I'm not freaking blind, guys. It's Squalo style. I think it's Thursday. You could die? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Geez, you know. Oh, yeah, because it goes on and on and on. For all you haters, there's something to chew on for the next couple of minutes. Welcome to another video from Guilao 60. As an expat that lives in China, um, I see the rhetoric that's being being spouted about China by politicians and mainstream media in the West, and it, and it's disturbing. It's you know it's disturbing to all of us expats, especially the YouTubers that are that are in China that are trying to uh, paint. Uh, a better picture of China, you know, something that is more realistic than what you guys get in your mainstream media. You know, the, the rhetoric from the politicians is, is based on uh, their desire for more power, uh, their desire to be re-elected, their desire to be able to turn the heads of the population of places like Canada, the United States and Australia, New Zealand, UK and yes even India now. Uh, you see, and, and you see this is where they get their power from, is from the people that will vote for them and uh, it's disturbing to see what lengths they will go to uh, to, to acquire this power. and. Uh, uh, you know, turning the heads of my countrymen uh, in Canada and women uh, against a country like China uh, for their own benefit is 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 sad because, uh, as everybody knows that watches my videos, I've sort of come to enjoy China, love China, and uh, the customs, the areas, the 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 quickness of the the building of the economy and the infrastructure to you know the foods uh, the yes the cheap beer and brandy too I know you guys some of the guys are gonna go there and say yeah but uh, Guilao what about the beer and the brandy yes all of that and being able to do it very inexpensively here in China uh, that all has uh, it, that all makes me look at China as a really nice place. Right now, it's 44 degrees with the humidex. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, a cold beer would be right good now, and I'd have to drink it really fast, or else it would get warm. See, in Canada, in the middle of winter, we say, well, we got to drink the beer really fast before it freezes. It's the opposite here. You know what I mean? But you know the lengths that that uh, you know. And I'm gonna, as I always use the, the United States as an example, because they're they're the most aggressive uh, out of all of the all of the countries around the world against China. And uh, you know, from from uh, you know the trade war, trying to throw economic boundaries on China because they're they're becoming, you know fairly rich, fairly quickly, uh, big competition, uh, both economically and militarily in the world. Yes, uh, blaming China for the COVID-19 when uh, it's already common knowledge out there, guys, but you, you won't get that from Trump, that uh, they had uh, confirmed cases in places like France and yes, the United States before the, the cases in Wuhan. So, you know, you look at that and you say, well, uh, bringing court cases against China because of the CV, you know, things like this. It's, and it doesn't stop there. Political in interference in uh, Hong Kong, and uh, people say, oh, they didn't do, yeah, they did. Uh, political interference in uh, Taiwan, um, trying to wreck Huawei communications. Huawei phones by uh, making it so well the United States can't sell uh, uh, chips to, to Huawei but there was a loophole then they wanted to get everybody else on board with that so now nobody can sell chips to Huawei trying to kill the Huawei thing because they're they're ahead of them in technology and this can't be because they're not a, an American company uh, even so far as to arrest uh, Meng Wanzhou on what what most people think are bullshit charges and uh, having her held in Canada on an extradition treaty and this is going to take years and years and years to, to hash out. I think it's already been a year or two be, you know since since she was arrested but you see the the thing is that all of these all of these things are being done by the United States against China to 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 make things harder on China. See, China would excel way faster in this world uh, 
both economically, infrastructure and militarily, uh, if the United States would just lay off and, uh, and deal with China in a manner like they deal with all other countries. Well, actually, they did tariff the steel in Canada and aluminum. See, now, now the United States has taken it upon themselves to uh, start attacking uh, Chinese citizens too, uh, you know, uh, students on student visas in the United States, saying, well, oh, there's about 350,000 students, we're, we're, we're thinking about not giving them visas anymore, uh, limiting grads and, and post-grad uh, uh, visas, where it used to be five years down to one year. Uh, you know, they're cutting out the best of the best. Uh, coming from China to the United States, about 90% of these graduates in in and these are good these are good grads uh, stay in the United States and work for United States companies. So not only are they screwing themselves out of all of the tuition money that's supposed to be going to uh, these universities, post-secondary education uh, facilities, but they're screwing the companies out of some of the best students, the high highly trained uh, people uh, in the world. And uh, see, so so there's no rhyme or reason to it either. It's one of those things that just makes no sense. You know, it's uh, it's Trumponomics. So by basically um, attacking Chinese citizens uh, with the, with the immigration visa uh, stuff, let's just call it stuff. Um, they are actually implementing. Uh, a China Exclusion Act 2.0, excluding people on their point of origin. I think that's against the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, mind you. Um, but does that only apply to Canadian citizens or does that apply to everybody around the world? I think it applies to everybody around the world because why would you treat your citizens better than you treat anybody else? It, it just doesn't make any sense. But you can see that the, the, the world, well not the, the whole world, but at least the Five Eyes countries are looking at China differently. It started, you see, it, and the CV was just an excuse to go after them uh, a little bit more. Uh, it was, there was trade wars and there was tariffs. There, there was uh, 400 military bases surrounding China. Before that, they were running their warships through the South China Sea. They, you know, all of these things were, were are accumulating and uh, we're looking at the beginning. Well, actually, it's not the beginning anymore. We are into a full-fledged Cold War. The first one was against Russia, and that lasted for decades from uh, the end of the first Second World War. Sorry, uh, until uh, Reaganomics sort of took over, and uh, they they tore down the wall. Gorbachev was the right the right guy at the right time for that, and everything sort of was kumbaya until. Uh, until it wasn't anymore and now you've got basically another Cold War dealing with Russia but you got another Cold War dealing with China who's always behind these wars these Cold Wars the wars the Libya the Afghanistan's the the you know everything it's a, the United States is behind this and, and why is that because that's just the way they are they figure that carrying a gun makes them uh, bigger better smarter uh, more uh, I don't know um, basically the opposite of what a Canadian is uh, on, a, on a good day. Uh, we do have Canadians that love their guns. I'm one of them. Uh, and uh, I grew up shooting muskrats and ducks and geese and you name it. Uh, it, was, it was part of our heritage. Um, but we, we didn't shoot people. We didn't, we didn't try to influence other countries around the world with our ideology. And I think that's basically what the United States has been doing um, for, well, since the Second World War. And uh, what gives them the right to do it? A big, strong military. Uh, spending trillions of dollars on military a year. I don't know how much it is, but I, I heard the word trillion a couple of times, so I would imagine it's at least that. And, uh, you know, running how many military bases around the world and surrounding China, uh, wouldn't that money be better spent on uh, hospitals, 
uh, senior care homes. What if what a what a concept? Uh, senior care homes where the seniors are are dealt with properly. Uh, you know, have a nice place to live, good food, top of the line nurses and doctors, uh, hospitals, brand new hospitals. You see, that's what they do here in China. Uh, they they haven't got to the nursing home thing yet. I've been through a couple, and they're shitholes. Let me tell you. But uh, uh, the hospitals are getting better. The infrastructure, the subways, the the parks. Like seriously, uh, show me one homeless person. Uh, show me one tent. Uh, show me one drug addict. Show me uh, uh, a mother and daughter that are taking pictures in the park without a worry in the world. No panhandlers. None of that stuff. Uh, you know, big brand new buildings. Uh, the roads are amazing here in China. Uh, you know, the high speed trains that get you around for next to nothing. Uh, you know, buses, planes, trains freaking planes though you should see the airports in this country my god see that's what China's been doing and, and making themselves better and I think it intimidates a lot of the countries in the West because they see themselves falling behind and the only way to to uh, uh, make them feel better is like the bully thing if you tear somebody down it makes you better and and uh, it, it really doesn't but this is the mentality of the of today's generation of politicians and we've got to get away from that in the West because it does nobody any good uh, so when I back to the original theme of this video when I see uh, the heads of my countrymen and uh, Americans and you know Westerners because I, I, I still identify as a Westerner uh, the politicians and uh, the mainstream media changing or attempting to change the minds of, of my countrymen against a country like China it uh, it scares the hell out of me because I like living here. I don't want things to change. I want them to stay the way they are. Uh, I want uh, peace in the world. I want uh, I want cheap beer and brandy. I want good weather. I want palm trees and and nice parks. I want to eat Chinese food. I want and I, and I think if everybody from the West came over here and spent a couple of years, um, all of this would be over. Like they 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 wouldn't be able to manipulate them. But it's those people that don't have passports. And never have had a passport. They never have left their hometown, their county, their province, their state, whatever. So they just listen to what they're told on the news, Fox News. My God, what rhetoric! You know, that's like the the TV uh, inquirer type thing. But where is it all going to end? I don't know. And uh, that's a scary. That's a scary thought. Because if this turns any uglier than it is right now, uh, you may see that it goes from a cold war to a hot war, and, uh, and, and very quickly. And I don't want to be around to see that. Anyway, those are my thoughts for today. If you like this video, as always, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button, call your local politician, and and complain about uh, the things I've talked about today. Uh, I don't have their number, you're going to have to look it up. Hit the bell, resubscribe, and never forget to put a couple bucks in the children's Patreon account. It's for a good cause. It's for poor rural Chinese children. Uh, they just need a helping hand. Thanks for watching. Bye now.